Hey, welcome to Caddis Island County Park. My name is Nikki Vernaccio, one of the senior park naturalists here at Caddis Island. And today I'm standing at our point. We call it Pages Point. So let me show you on the map where we are today. Now here's our star, our nature center here. And when you come and visit, if you walk up our main trail, which is about a mile walk, all the way to the end, you come to this gorgeous Bay Beach. And if you walk up our Bay Beach all the way up to the end, you come to Pages Point. So this is almost the easternmost part of the park that you can access. And there's a lot going on here at Pages Point. We have a long strip of sandy beach, which is a great place to come and sit on the bench or do yoga or meditate. Um, or even bring some school classes that we um, bring here often. Now behind me, or actually I want to show you one more thing here on this map. Um, if you take a look at Caddis Island's map here, you'll notice it's surrounded on three sides by water. Now you're saying, now how in the heck is Caddis Island an island if the water doesn't go all the way around it? Well, we're a little funny here. So technically, uh, part of land that is surrounded three sides by water is called a peninsula. So technically Caddis Island is a peninsula. But what happens very often is the salt marshes all around the park flood over during high tide, especially during a coastal storm, making an island in the center. So you can't actually cross sometimes from here to here. So that's how we get the name uh, Caddis Island. So back to our peninsula. Last week we learned a little bit about Silver Bay and today I want to tell you a little bit about Barnegat Bay. So right here at the point it's very breezy so if I'm a little sound like there's wind coming in or if I'm a little louder than usual just because it's windy and breezy and the waves are starting to rock. So Caddis Island actually separates Silver Bay from Barnegat Bay. Barnegat Bay is a very long bay that goes along our shorelines of Ocean County. It runs about 42 miles long and across the bay on the horizon are houses on the other side. That's the barrier island. So on the other side of the barrier island is the Atlantic Ocean. Now the only way for people to get from the ocean into the bay or vice versa, is by going in an inlet. So to the north of us, we have the Point Pleasant Canal that leads you to the Manasquan Inlet. And to the south of us, we have Barnegat Inlet. So those are the only two places where the ocean and fresh water mix to make this really great bay. So Barnegat is actually a Dutch name for Bay of the Breakers. And we're getting a great example of some of those waves coming in now. So Barnegat Bay, even though it looks very dark and very vast and very large, is actually very shallow. So many of the bays here in New Jersey are shallow type bays, maybe four to five feet deep. There are spots that are deeper where it's dredged for uh, boats and stuff to go through, but in general they're very shallow bays. When the wind blows off of the ocean, you can see how it kind of makes a ripple effect blowing up those waves onto the shoreline. So the Bay of the Breakers is definitely a good uh, descriptive word for Barnegat Bay. Come the afternoon, you'll see white caps that are going on the bay here. Now, I was telling you a little bit that we're gonna talk about pirates today, because we have a little bit of pirate folklore here at Caddis Island, and I don't wanna say it's folklore because it's actually true. So, Back during the Revolutionary War, during the late 1700s, there is a man who lived here at Caddis Island, and his name was Timothy Page. So Timothy Page lived here, and he, during that time, the Revolutionary War was kind of going on. Um, he was someone who really wanted to be involved in the area and for his country. So he had a special job that he had to do. Now, I want you to imagine Across the way, if you can see on the horizon, there are two water towers, two poles that are sticking up in the distance. 
in between those two water towers, there used to be an inlet right here across from Caddis Island that was called Cranberry Inlet. Now that was the only way that ships could come from the ocean into the bay and sail up to Tom's River. Maybe ships carrying goods from Europe. So they would come in and out of that area there. So what Mr. Page would do is he would have a small boat, maybe like a Garvey, which is a tr traditional Bayman's boat here. Um, he would have this small boat and he would put a pole in the center and he would hang a lantern up top. And he would gather a few of his friends and other Garveys and boats and they would sit right out here in the shores of Caddis Island at night and they would wait in the dark. Now, a British ship maybe coming in to attack Tom's River might see those big ships in the distance and think, well, it's safe to sail our big ship in. Let's continue to do so. So those ships would sail in and quickly get stuck in the shallow waters. Well, what Mr. Page would do is he and his friends would row over to those ships and unload their cargo, really steal and seize all their goods, and take those goods and sell them to Tom's River, usually much needed war supplies. So Timothy Page was technically a pirate, but during those days, he was commissioned by the Continental Congress, which was the government at the time, to actually do that. So he was called a privateer, not really a pirate. So here's some little bit of local history right here at Caddis Island shoreline. Now that inlet, after about, I'd say 50 to 60 years, closed up, sealed up shut. It did open a little bit during Superstorm Sandy, where the ocean met the bay. But at this point, it's no longer open right across from Caddis Island. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit down our shoreline. Uh, we have lots of salt marsh that backs up along the, the beach area here. As I said, we do a great school activity called seining. Hopefully we can do that activity in the future. No of our school classes would like to see virtual seining. Um, it just requires more than one person. So we still have to figure out how we can do that safely. But come check out over here. I want to show you how the beach changes. It's always changing. Every time I come out, it looks a little different. Sand is removed, sand is added on. And I just wanted to show you actually where this salt marsh used to be. This salt marsh plants. Um, the marsh has been kind of taken over by the water. The sand has kind of been deposited on top. And we're just seeing how it's just changing this environment. We've actually lost quite a bit of land here at this point. Uh, this point is an area that gets a lot of erosion. Um, the waves travel great distances before they hit the point here at Caddis Island. So we're actually a really important piece of land protecting Silver Bay behind us. Without our point of land here, we would see a lot more flooding and a lot more impact in parts of Silver Bay um, than we see now. So let me show you some of the cool creatures that we do have here. Let's see, we'll move over this way. <clears throat> this is called a rack. And a rack is kind of like a pile of stuff that might have washed up with the tide. And there's so many cool things that you can find in a rack. My favorite thing to look for is sea glass, but we don't really get sea glass here too much. Um, something that we can see is this green stuff. It almost looks like a plastic bag or a plastic wrap. This is called sea lettuce. And sea lettuce is one of the most important seaweeds that live out here in the bay. They almost um, have like grass beds underneath and lots of animals depend on this sea lettuce. Here's some dried up ones. You may recognize this as something we saw Megan do a little um, video on is a horseshoe crab, but we're missing some of its parts. We're missing its telson or its tail, and we're missing the back half of it. But this was a pretty big horseshoe crab that once roamed around the bay. It's been kind of knocked around for a while, has some sea lettuce stuck to it. And if we flip it over, we have some great barnacles that have attached itself. Barnacles are a little animal that's kind of like a shrimp. They start off looking very shrimp-like when they're babies, and as they're swimming around, they're looking for something hard, hard to go on to. They find that hard spot, and they'll actually cement their heads 
to the base and then build the shell wall around them. It almost looks like they have little feathery feet that they'll stick out to catch food like plankton and such. Now this um, barnacle is no longer alive. I think this horseshoe crab shell has been up here dry for quite some time, but they can go in and out of the water with the tides. You might see barnacles on piling sometimes. When it's low tide, they'll be sticking themselves out again. So that's a cool little find we have here today. We also have, where did they go my friends? Little blue crabs. Now these blue crabs are kind of reddish right now because uh, they've been sitting out here in the sun. These little guys are going to grow, would grow up and get bigger. Many times we have small crabs like this along our shoreline. And if you're into crabbing, crabbing is always a great uh, activity and sport. And you just want to make sure you follow all local regulations on crabbing. And to tell if you can see if you can tell boy from girl. So underneath the crab is how you can tell. If you see, there's a shape in the center that kind of looks like a candle. That candle shape tells me that this is a boy crab or a jimmy. Sometimes they call it by nickname. If it was a girl crab, let's see if I can show you, it had more of a pyramid or a triangle shape underneath. So now you can tell boy from girl crabs. Just in our little spot here on the beach. Now since we are on the Bay Beach, we don't really get a lot of seashells like you would find on the ocean. Um, we might get some pieces of mussels or pebbles. Occasionally we found in the um, Native American arrowheads here, which is pretty cool. Um, but you're not going to find a lot of seashell type material um, right here. But I do have a couple of stories I wanted to share. Since we are here on the point, and as I had mentioned, this is the gets the most impact when we have a storm, particularly a storm like a nor'easter. Uh, this is going to flood over, a lot of debris is going to get lost over here, a lot of um, trash, um, but also some interesting things. Two years ago, we actually had a harbor seal wash up during the storm. Unfortunately, the harbor seal was an already dead harbor seal but it was very exciting to see one. Um, we took photos of it and then we called our local Marine Mammal Stranding Center uh, to advise us on how to, what to do with that uh, dead seal. So that was an interesting find. Um, we've also had a large fish called an ocean sunfish or a mola mola. They're about the size of me and they have these two giant fins and a gigantic eye. That's washed up here at the point. Um, and we've just seen some lot of interesting things out here. We had a snowy owl a few years ago in the winter time decide to make this spot its resting place for about 24 hours. And it was kind of fun to watch it just hanging out on the osprey nest. So, so I invite you to come visit, come walk up to the point, come explore. We do not allow swimming. Uh, this is not a guarded beach whatsoever, but it's a great passive beach to come walking, sitting, uh, relaxing, and just enjoying the nature that's around us. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, my name is Nikki Vernaccio from Caddis Island County Park. Take care, everyone.